this compulsory education is murder of all soft skills in this country. So the guy looks like an illiterate, he can't read and write, but he's like magical with his geometry. This is India's USP. We have demonstrated great skills in IT, uh, in telecom, but I think India still has to tap the potentials of some of our greatest assets, our soft skills, you know, our heritage, our craft traditions, which are so unique to us and which have been sustained over generations and years. What role can our government, along with, uh, along with influencers, along with businesses, along with consumers do to be able to promote the soft skills of India, to promote the tradition and culture of India, and to create that into a cultural capital in the global market? Well, uh, in many ways, I know I will become very unpopular by saying what I will say now, but this compulsory education is murder of all soft skills in this country. Because in this country, we learn to do things with our hands in a way that you can't imagine possible many wonderful things. And these things won't happen that you can learn after 18 years of age. You have to learn much earlier. You have to observe your parents doing it or you have to be there, you know, to get that skill. I will tell you my families, uh, my relatives, many of them are very much involved in silk weaving and silk printing in Bangalore, Mysore, that region. And we have also been silk cultivators, you know, mulberry cultivators and all that in our families. So at one point, uh, because I was determined to not to qualify for anything in the university, I was just doing literature and just having my time. So my father thought I must get into some business because I'm not getting educated properly. So he sent me, why don't you go and see the silk industry that my uncle is one of the leading business people at that time in Bangalore. So why don't you go and see? I went there and I thought I'll just see. I was not thinking of getting into the industry, but I thought, let me go and see. I went there and this guy was sitting there and he's just weaving a silk sari. And he doesn't have a diagram, definitely no computer, nothing. Like magic, he's just doing like this and like that one flower comes up on the sari. And he's just going on doing like this, another flower comes up. Nothing is ever not aligned properly, perfect. Like today you can get those designs in computers. But in his mind, it's all fixed and the guy looks like an illiterate, he can't read and write. But he's like magical with his geometry. The geometry is one thing that always kind of uh, mind boggled me. The geometry of the existence itself, the way it is. This guy has this sense of geometry, no education, no nothing, but so fantastic. Almost miraculously, these flowers keep coming up without a single flaw in them. So I just sat there looking at him for whole three days before he finished this sari. And it was so incredible watching this. So these kind of skills will not come by reading about it. You just have to immerse yourself in it. There is no other way. I think in our country, our idea of compulsory education needs to change. Everybody just reading about physics, chemistry, mathematics, fully knowing I'm not going to become a mathematician or a chemist or anything else, simply picking up small bits and uh, tidbits of every science. And everybody who's read a high school textbook, unfortunately, think they're scientists, you know, because you see the commentary that's going on in the social media. They all think they are scientists because they read a high school textbook. It is completely wrong. I feel we need to bring an education where if somebody wants to learn weaving or uh, art or dyeing or whatever, you know, various things, including agriculture, as a part of education from an early age, because these things, if you don't instinctively pick it up at an early age, suddenly you will do it at the age of 20, it's not going to work like that. So this so-called compulsory education, sending everybody to that a British kind of education system, which was only designed to produce clerks for their uh, Her Majesty's service. We are still doing the same education, destroying all these crafts. Above all, the biggest concern is, we have made some small surveys, and uh, we found that uh, not even 2% of the farmers uh, are able, 
I mean, are able to encourage their children to go into farming, next generation. So in another 20 years, we will have a serious situation where we don't know how to grow our food. So already we don't know how to weave our clothing, already we don't know how to weave a basket, already all these things have happened. So if soft skills have to come, our idea of education has to go through a thorough change. This everybody going, sitting there, learning ABC, one, two, three, three languages, and uh, you don't know anything at the age of 15. You're not capable of doing a thing at the age of 18. That is not a good way to uh, do things if you want to have soft skills. But I feel in the future of this world, because the world is so connected today, if you really have something intricate and beautiful, the world is hungry for those things. But we are not able to... We are looking at the past. I'm talking about thousand years ago. At that time, we were taking our goods all the way to Jerusalem, Damascus, you know, Greece and all these places. Today, it should be so easy to do that with the transportation and the online communications we have. But in these times, we are destroying all that and uh, studying that kind of education that, uh, you know, what, the, what was done for an occupied nation. Thank you. In fact, I wanted to share something personal with you. You know, when I was very young, I dropped out of school for five years. I had clinical depression because my parents wanted me to study medicine. It took my father five years to convince me to oh, go back. That is an Indian ailment. That's an Indian ailment. Everybody wants to study medicine. <laughs> I know. And I, I did want to. And my, you know, for me, I thought that I thought that education was like an arranged marriage that you, you get married and then you find love. I wanted to have a love marriage. I wanted to know what I was chasing. It created a lot of havoc inside me, but I was glad that I dropped out of school so that it gave me courage to do what I wanted to do. So I completely understand what you're saying.